Hey everyone, we're out here in Vista, California with Nature Designs. I'm gonna be talking to Todd Peters today. Todd, thanks for joining me out here. You're welcome. And we're gonna talk about how to efficiently stock your truck for a perfect installation or a nearly perfect installation. Todd's gonna to tell us a little bit about himself and the company that he works for. So Todd, why don't we get started? Like you said, my name's Todd Peters. I've been with the company about three years. We have supervisors like myself that generally run three or four jobs at a time and um, lead men on the job and then your crews. And we try to drop ship everything we can to be efficient, you know, from our vendors. But you can't always count on having everything. Mm -hmm. So um, we've got trucks that deliver from the uh, yard as well and also from um, my truck. I try to keep it stocked with various amounts of irrigation parts and tools that come in handy when the unexpected happens. Exactly. So you get all the crews out the door. You manage uh, multiple crews that are out at multiple properties. So what is it like in the morning getting them suited up, getting them ready to rock and roll, and getting them out the door? Well, it starts the day before or the days before because you're always trying to plan you know, for immediately uh, one to three days ahead and then on the long view, you know, a week to a month ahead. Um, in the mornings, my function is usually sorting out any issues that we've had overnight or changes we might have thought of that we need from our discussions the afternoon before, making sure that the guys are going to the jobs they're supposed to go to and the deliveries are being made from the, the yard that need to get to help those guys, whether it's wheelbarrows or materials or tools. Now you said that you have multiple days of prep before. How do you know what you have on your truck and what you should be stocking on your truck for the next job? There are things that I always like to keep on my truck as far as tools and spare parts. And then depending on the job, I'll throw in a few extra things depending on what the job makeup uh, is on that particular site. So I'm really excited to, to get to walk through your truck today and see what you have and how you put it together. So would you mind if we started taking a look at your truck? Not at all, it's right here. Let's, all let's right, go. cool, let's go. All right, so the first compartment coming out of the driver's side is probably the most important compartment. What do you keep in there? Well, the first compartment here, one of the most important things I keep on my truck is this bag here, it's got my PPE equipment for myself and my crew. I keep extra gloves, earplugs, eye protection glasses, dust masks, rubber gloves in case we're handling anything caustic, all the stuff of that nature. This first compartment might just be the most important because protective equipment is imperative for your crew. PPE or personal protective equipment includes, but is definitely not limited to, gloves, safety vests, hard hats, steel-toed boots, ear protection, and safety glasses. If this equipment fails on the job, your crew members cannot safely work. Keep backup so you can keep the team protected and working. You should also include a first aid kit for any mishaps on the job site. That, that's something that has to be replaced periodically all the time. So we always keep extra in my truck and all the lead guys okay. uh, have extra equipment as well. After that, I've got my go bag, which is when I get called out to a service call or a customer service thing that something's wrong and you don't really know what's happening. I got a bag here that just has a little bit of a lot of stuff. Screwdri <laughs> screwdrivers, wrenches, pipe wrenches, Teflon tape, some electrical tools. I got my testing meter down here for that. I got a portable shop vac, hand tools and socket sets, my drill bit sets. This truck is set up with an electrical converter, so I got a spotlight for dark places and night work. My four foot level, all typical stuff that you're gonna need. Todd mentioned a go bag. This is a great kit to pack for quick service and troubleshooting tools. This might include things like hammers for staking out areas or installing hardware on walls, screwdrivers and a socket set for controller mounting and valve servicing, saws, PVC primer, PVC solvent, Teflon tape, pipe cutters, and pipe wrenches for pipe and valve installation, adjustable wrenches, tongue and groove pliers, locking pliers, and adjustable pliers for servicing different products are also very nice to have on hand. These next items can be unique to the manufacturer, so it's important to carry the right gear. Be sure to have a variety of keys that may include hose bib or quick coupler keys, a standard water valve key, and an extended water valve key. These will come in handy when you need to turn on and off the water at different devices. 
Manufacturer sprinkler adjustment keys or tools are crucial for adjusting the arc and the radius of sprinklers like sprays, rotors, and the MP rotator. Manufacturer controller keys are also very important to have on hand to get access to any locked controller. For those tricky sprinkler repair jobs, it's not a bad idea to carry a nipple extractor or stub wrench. Lastly, let's take a look into the go bag to see what kinds of electrical tools you might want to have charged up and ready for your next job. You want to have a flashlight to see into those hard to see spots and at night. Wire and ground fault locators to find wire, wire cuts, electrical shorts and leaks. A multimeter to troubleshoot the electrical components on any irrigation system from the controller and wiring to the solenoid. An outlet tester with ground fault circuit to quick test if you have power from an outlet. A remote like the Hunter Rome and Rome Excel to manually turn on irrigation valves in the field for quick checks. Wire cutters, wire strippers, along with a variety of wire nuts for electrical install and repairs. And lastly, a shop vacuum for quick cleanup. You may think of a few more items that will be important for getting the job done, but this list should help get you started. Probably the most used stuff or most frequently used stuff that you have on the, on the truck here? Yeah, this and then um, when we get to the other side is the compartment that has all my irrigation parts. Cool. That gets used quite a bit uh, because there's always something that you need for irrigation parts. Perfect. Well, let's move back around and keep going. Sure. So in this next compartment is mostly uh, power tools, electrically powered tools, drills, sawzalls, jigsaws. Um, there's also usually a gas saw in here for cutting concrete. A compartment or area in the truck for storing power tools for the tough jobs isn't a bad idea. Here are some tools you might consider. A drill, reciprocating saw, hammer drill, masonry bits, and extension cords. This allows us to handle woodwork, hardscape, and minor repairs needed during installations. An electric jackhammer to help break up the tough clay soil or concrete. Blowtorch and solder for brass or copper work. A trusty blower for cleanup. And one of those brass water jet nozzles to attach to a hose for trenching under sidewalks. The guys have a lot of tools on the jobs, but there's a lot of times there's a need for more or something breaks, I've got it. I got backups and we can keep things moving. That's where it comes in when you gotta have extra parts, extra tools, you got everything you need so you don't have to go to the store, right? Exactly. I mean, that's the, that's the drawback of doing a job, you know, when you have to go to the store, you have to buy a part, wasted time, wasted labor. Uh, it's always gonna happen, but the mo more you can reduce that and keep it from happening, the more efficient you can, you're gonna be. All right, cool. Uh, my ladder, you know, six foot ladder, you know, if we need something bigger, I'll have one of the other trucks bring it out. Um, always, every day, filling up ice water and the igloo cooler for me and the guys. This compartment usually has a uh, jackhammer okay. and a blower in it. So let's take a look around the rest of the truck. Awesome. All right. So I really love the bed of this truck because of its versatility. It um, gives me a lot of options for what I need to carry. So right now there's not a lot in here, but I always carry a couple spare shovels and a few other things. But today I got no big deliveries, so it's kind of small, but this bed pulls all the way out. The truck bed generally stays clear for picking up and hauling plants or large job site materials. Some large items on the back include a ladder for checking or hanging controller sensors, shovels, a pickaxe, or mattock for trenching and backfill, five gallon buckets for moving materials and cleanup, rakes for cleanup, fuel and extra wire. Just remember, you'll probably think of something for your unique situation, but this list should get you moving right along. Gives me a spot for a workbench, and it makes it easier loading and unloading. And then, and this top, if I've got something tall I need to fit in here, the bars come off the rack, and this top pushes back to oh, allow me to put fantastic. some, I could put trees in here or tall shrubs or a piece of equipment that's too big to fit otherwise. It works out really nice and gives me the options to put a lot of different stuff in here before I have to go to one of the bigger delivery trucks to move my stuff around. 
So obviously you don't have a lot of stuff in here right now, no. but the potential to have stuff in here is endless. Oh, yeah. You can get whatever tools you need. And like you said, getting rid of that uh, crossbar up there and putting something bigger in, maybe some trash cans, whatever it is, yeah. that's perfect. I, I can fit a couple of wheelbarrows and a plate compactor and a bunch of other stuff in here at the same time with the options I've got here. Was this truck custom made or how'd you come about it? Well, we came across it from one of the local uh, utility cable companies when they were done with it. And uh, it was set up for them, but a lot of the different moving parts on this just really work for us. Before we go to the side of the truck, I'd like to point out this tube. You know, I carry PVC pipe, steel pipe. Um, I can carry longer levels, anything that's got some length up to about nine and a half, ten feet, I can carry in this tube and not have to tie it down to the rack when I got just one or two of something. Makes things really easy for me to have um, extra pipe for repairs and stuff on the job. The truck is equipped with a racking system that allows for hauling of long PVC and conduit and it allows for quick and efficient loading and unloading. Maybe some conduit for installing controllers exactly. and pulling some wire in the ground. Exactly. That's why it's in there right now. Awesome. Cool. Let's move on to the next side. So here in this compartment, I've got a step stool, power cords, and a rotor hammer and bits, which comes in handy when we're having to do work around concrete. We need mm -hmm. to fit something in. And this for overhead stuff helps me reach. Awesome. This next compartment is a little bit of a catch-all. I've got paint supplies. Paint and finishing supplies are also very handy to have with you. Things like flags for marking heads or obstacles, marking paint for outlining a dig area, paint and brushes for touch-up, neon safety or caution tape for easy identification of holes and work hazards, canvases or tarps for covering areas from damage, and some wire brushes for cleaning parts and tools. Now hold on, paint supplies, what are you painting? Well, sometimes we install fences and we have to touch up the paint on them after we're done with our landscaping. Sometimes we're doing, um, adding drains to downspouts mm -hmm. to, to the drainage system and we want to paint the connectors the same color as either the stucco or the downspout so it's just not a white fitting with a different color. There's always paint to do on a job. We paint our conduits to match the stucco when we run them up the side of the house and we have to install a new circuit to the meter panel. All those things involve paint. You cover it all, man. Yeah, we try to. <laughs> but I've got extra screws here for the fencing. I've got trash bags. It's always a necessity on the job sites because mm -hmm. we want to leave our jobs nice and clean. I've got my electrical pull tape. I've got duct tape and blue tape, gorilla tape, you name it. A lot of odds and ends. You name it, you tape it? Yeah. Um, I even got a heat gun in here in case I need to, to shrink wrap some stuff uh, when we made connections to things. All right, one more compartment. What, what do we got? Well, this is one of the more important compartments on the truck. You know, we talked about the first one being real important because I keep my safety gear mm -hmm. and my go bag in there. But this uh, carries a lot of parts that you're going to see that the guys really like this because I'm able to carry uh, a variety of, of different parts and tools. Um, like I said, you know, we get bulk deliveries to the job sites, but there's always the need for an odd part, a cross or a cap or an elbow that you didn't think about. And can't carry everything because there's just way too many parts they manufacture. But mm -hmm. I can carry a few oddballs and then most of the really common stuff that we use day to day. So if we run out of something, I usually have it. Having a well-stocked and organized bin of extra irrigation parts will save you a lot of time running to the distributor or back to the shop. Consider adding some or all of these items to your truck. Organized fittings for pipe repair along with PVC primer and solvent, replacement hunter valves, a hunter DC latching solenoid, and a 24 volt AC solenoid to fit any hunter valve for quick repair. Replacement diaphragms for quick repair of a leaking or stuck valve, extra nozzles and MP rotator nozzles to replace damaged heads, O-ring kits for lost O-rings, and a tubing cutter for fast repairs. Prepared as usual. Yep, I like it. Um, so this what is, else we got this is mostly, this is mostly uh, you know, white PVC irrigation 
pipe, PVC. In this second drawer, I've got here in the front a lot of drip irrigation stuff, you know, black pipe fittings, some small valves, half inch valves, things of that nature, some miscellaneous gas parts. Mm -hmm. uh, we do a lot of fire pits and we do a lot of outdoor heaters and gas installations to people's backyards to pull heaters and things like that. I got a few miscellaneous parts for that electrical conduit sweeps. Mm -hmm. um, and then grounding clamps for swimming pools and for ground wires. Uh, some spare valves that I can take parts off of or use the entire thing if I need to. Some valve bodies and some uh, riser bodies for sprinkler heads. And once again, just a little more variety of different things that we can have in there. I see a new solenoid over there. So you're probably using that for going out and testing the connection in the field to make sure you have good connectivity through the wire. Yeah. 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 Okay. Using that multimeter that we saw on the other side? Uh, sometimes. <laughs> the, sol the solenoid's a lot faster though yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for checking those things. I hear you, I hear you. <laughs> cool. So obviously all of these things keep you super prepared on site, keep your jobs running efficiently. Now when you're you're getting emails, you're getting phone calls all day long. Are you going back to the office at the end of the day to respond to all those things? Or are you doing it right here from your truck? Well, we try to do it on the run. You know, we've all got smartphones now. So we have email, we have texting, we have FaceTime. And we use all those things to communicate with each other and with our clients. Mm -hmm. When there's something larger I need to be reviewing, like a set of, you know, like a set of plans that's not in my possession or something, I'll use my laptop for the bigger screen so I can see things. And then there's things I just have access to with my laptop that I don't with the smartphone. Yeah, makes sense. Doing paperwork, getting invoices sent out and everything else. Let's go take a look. Sure. All right, so here we are at your mobile desk. <laughs> yeah, the hood works good. The ledges from the doors on the other side work good and so does the tailgate. <laughs> but uh, no matter where I'm at, I've got the laptop for reviewing stuff that I don't have on hand or can't get on my phone or can't blow up big enough to, for what I really need to see. Always looking for efficiency for a mobile man. Yep. I can review the photos and, and videos I've taken on site as well on the big screen so I know what the site really looks like and forward it out to uh, the clients and my uh, you know, superiors. Do you use any programs for reading plans and reading scale on plans? Yeah, we use a few. I mean, besides PDF, uh, we use Bluebeam a lot to do takeoffs and do measurements and stuff like that. Awesome. Yeah, very efficient program. Love that. Yeah. Well, Todd, this has been really great. I, I can't believe how, how great you have this thing stocked and how ready you are for every job. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much it's for having pleasure. us out today. I know you got to get back to those guys. Yep. So we'll let you get back to it because they need you out there in the field. And thanks for stopping by, guys. We'd love to have you. Todd, thanks again. Nature Designs, thank you. We'll see you on the next video.